We got geography now. We got Hungary. I don't really know too much about Hungary. Let's get straight into this. Have you ever had a strange neighbor that moved into your block with no relatives around, had a weird accent, and had weird decorations posted all over the yard? No. It's basically Hungary. Hi. <laughs> Hi. It's time to learn geography. No! Everybody say hi to my friend, Nick. That. You may have recognized him as the charming scientist from America's Got Talent. Say hi, Nick. <laughs> What's up, Oh, wow. Okay, so I knew Nick before all that stuff. And I I've never seen that, but that's cool. Channel, Nickopedia, a while back. Check it out. Subscribe to his channel if you want. The, the video we did was really good. It was like micro to macro. It was a really science-y concept. I, I thought it turned out great. So the cool thing is cool. he's actually part Hungarian. He's super proud of it. He's been to Hungary. So today he's going to co-host with me. Question. Is there anything that I should know before we start? Yeah, basically just don't be more likable than me or have better abs and you'll be fine. <laughs> what hey, does Nick, he ever yeah? show his Hungary is so Eastern European, oh, isn't it? Yeah! yeah, they hate it when you say that. And actually, Hungary is a landlocked country located in Central Europe, surrounded by seven countries. The right. nation is divided into 19 counties, whereas the capital, Budapest, acts as a separate administrative entity. The largest cities are, of course, Budapest, Debrecen, wow. and Zeged. However, the busiest airports are Budapest, Debrecen, and Gupier International. <sighs> Whoa, you totally just took the animation narration. <clears throat> yes, yes I did. I like this guy. <laughs> now, you know me. I love border disputes, anomalies, and territorial confusion. And although today Hungary actually doesn't really have any of those, the interesting thing is that Hungarians like to claim that they- Is Hungary the, uh, the country with the most uh, countries like next to it, like neighbors there? They're surrounded by themselves is, isn't it? due to the fact that there are high concentrated areas of Hungarians that live outside of Hungary and neighboring nations. This is because before World War One, Hungary was like a lot bigger and had a kingdom that spanned all the way from the Croatian coast to oh, a large wow. chunk of what is now Western Romania. After World War One, the Treaty of Trianon cut up over 70% of the land previously held by Hungary and ceded it to its neighboring states, which effectively cut off about a third of ethnic Hungarians still oh, living interesting. in those areas. Some of the largest the largest concentrations are found in what is today the southern regions of Slovakia and CK peoples in the central Transylvania regions of Romania. By the cool. way, Nick, fun side note, the comedian Louis CK is actually part Hungarian, but the CK part isn't his initials, but the pronunciation derived from CK. <laughs> I get it. Otherwise, the country <laughs> is teeming with I notable that, sites and landmarks such as St. Stephen's Basilica. There's also Buda Castle. And the Visgard Royal Ooh. Castle. Kioskur and Igor Castle. The Tomb of Gul Baba. Memento Park. I love castles. Church, the Citadella. The Budapest Time Wheel. The Bokod Floating oh, Houses. That? The Gursum. Yo, that looks sick. The, Citadella, the Budapest Time Wheel. The Bokod Floating Oh, I love that. The uh, Bukod floating houses. In houses. The Gursum ancient ruins. And the All country's right, cool. most iconic building, the Hungarian Parliament. Wow. Nick, you've been to Hungary. What do you recommend? Definitely go to the geothermal baths. Geothermal oh, baths. what is Nick, that? Nick, you've been to Hungary. What do you recommend? Definitely go to the geothermal bath. I want to go. That looks good. Oh, I want to go. Geothermal baths. Super cool. Speaking of geothermal activity. Mm-mm. The more we progress through this episode, the more you're going to kind of see how incredibly distinct and set apart Hungary is from the rest of Europe. For right. one, most of the entire but it's country in the middle lies Europe. in the Pannonian Basin, sometimes called the Great Hungarian Plain, nestled between the Carpathian Mountains and the Dinaric Alps, and the Balkan Mountains on every side. So basically, Hungary is a bowl. Yes, I know. Hungary, bowl, the pun possibilities are endless, <laughs> but we don't got time for that. So no no puns this time. Goulash in the bowl of Hungary. Only about 2% <laughs> of the country, mostly in the north, is 300 or more meters above sea level, and the rest is mostly flat in the largest grassland in Europe, the Hortobol. Otherwise, the two main and largest rivers, the Danube and the Tisza, are like the lifelines of Hungary as they travel north to south. Just to skip away, the largest wow. lake in all of Central Europe, Lake Balaton, sometimes referred to as the Hungarian Sea. The strange thing about Hungary, though, would have to be the geothermal springs that can be found everywhere. Budapest having- How many of these springs do they have? More springs than any other capital in the world. Springs that can be found everywhere. Budapest having more thermal springs than any other capital in the world. Nick, you're a sciencey type of guy. Tell them why there's hot springs in Hungary. Sure. It's strange because there are no direct fault lines or rifts that pass through Hungary. However, the area lies on a thermal basin not too far from the Eurasian plate that harbors geothermal activity, much like Yellowstone National Park in the US. Wow, so cool. what you're saying, Nick, is you don't need to be on a fault line to have geothermal activity, right? Yes, but most distant spots from activity are not too far from a fault line. Nonetheless, it's kind of like a volcanic blister on Earth. 
Okay, I learned something. <laughs> Otherwise, the largest national park, Buk, has eroded limestone karst formations, and nearby That's just to cool. the west, you can find the tallest mountain, Kekesh, wow. only about a thousand meters high. Hungary has some of the highest quality soil in all of Europe, with over 51% arable land. It allows them to grow a multitude of crops, their favorite one being paprika, or pepper. Paprika! Oh my god, I live on paprika. I add... Oh, my girl... Well, my girlfriend got me on it and she puts it on everything and now I have to pull it on everything. <laughs> Although popular all over the Balkans, paprika is always affiliated with Hungary and Hungarian cuisine. They put it on... That's really cool. I never knew that. Chicken, fish, soup, sausage, same, even cake. Same. Speaking of which, some of the top Hungarian dishes... I, I, okay, I don't really eat cake, but if I did have cake, I would put it on cake, but yeah, sure. It might include... Poppy seed rolls. Stuffed cabbage oh. and peppers. Langosh. Purkult. Kurtushkalats. Oh. Sour cherry soup. And the national dish everyone knows about goulash commonly pronounced goulash which it looks a little bit like a uh, like a like a stew kind of and it looks good but i don't know what it is at every christmas and keep in mind almost all these dishes nice. we just mentioned have paprika in them oh, of course which, i was told you are not hungarian unless you love tururudi candy bars mm, tururudi you love those huge fan oh okay huge confirmed <laughs> <laughs> that's that hungary's land makeup now we reach the most strangest and most interesting part the people I feel like he was so happy when he confirmed that. Hungarians are such interesting Slavs, aren't they? Mm -hmm. ah! And that, kids, is the number one thing to avoid saying to a Hungarian. First of all, the country has about 10 million people and has the largest physically isolated people group in Europe. Hey, man. Wow. Uh, good dude. Yeah, never better. Now, this is where things get a little tricky because, like we said in the Czech Republic or Czech episode, the Hungarian census doesn't mandate racial identification upon registration. So, what the report says might be a little different from what the actual numbers are. But what it does say about 86% of the country is ethnically Hungarian, somewhere around 5% are Romani or Gypsy, and the rest are kind right. of unspecified. It's speculated, though, that the unspecified group is most likely made up of Slovaks, Romanians, Germans, Serbs, Poles, and why not? A few Greeks, Turks, Armenians, and probably some more Gypsies. Also, they use the Hungarian for not the euro despite being in the euro zone. They use the type C outlet and they drive on the right side of the road. Now let's get some stuff straight. Who exactly are the Hungarians? Mm -hmm. For one, Hungarians have roots that are technically not even originally from Europe. According to legend, there were two brothers, Magor and Hunor. Hunor Hi. was the father of the Huns, Magor was the father of the Hungarians or the Moyor people. And they were maybe both sons of the Tower of Babel guy from the Bible. This is just what the story claims. That the Huns came badass, and took I over lie. the area in the 5th century but were eventually expelled. After the Roman Empire and Germanic tribes stuff, yada yada yada. The Moyor tribes came in around the 9th century from what most historians speculate, the Central Asian steppe regions far east past the Ural Mountains in Russia. It is believed uh -huh. they came in to reclaim the lost land of their cousins. This guy unified the tribes and thus the first proto-Hungarian state was born from outsiders from Asia. So Nick, that means you might really have some Central Asian blood in you. Nice. Does that Wait, mean what's I that? So Nick, that means you might have some Central Asian blood in you. Nice. Does that mean I get a free pass to make some Asian jokes? You get to make <laughs> light Asian jokes at the expense of your Hungarian heritage. What do you call a fifth century Central Asian guy named Gary? What? Hun Gary. <laughs> <laughs> After the photo <laughs> was established, history kind of went like Honestly, I, I think they could put that guy in, this guy right here, I don't even know his name. Uh, I think they could just put him in at any moment. It would just be so funny. Ah! After the Proto-Hungarian state was established, history kind of went like this. Kings. Christianity. Mongols attacked twice. Turks. Habsburgs. 1848 revolution. Empire with Austria. World War I Treaty of Trianon. World War II joined the Axis. Bad idea. Soviets come in and BAM! Eastern Bloc communism. 1956 revolution. Soviets retaliate. BAM! Soft communism. 1980 end of communism. And finally, the, the EU. Done. The Hungarian language is strange. The only two A languages lot. that exist are the Hunti and Mansi languages. Found the Hunti Mansi Autonomous Okrug far east past the Ural Mountains whoa, whoa. in Russia. Now, because this place was the birthplace of all Uralic languages, that means it's possible that the Finns and Estonians might. Oh my god, wait. I thought. Wait, it's not center. I mean, it, it's just because it was center of like so many countries around it. It's possible not... that the Finns and Estonians might be far off distant cousins of the Hungarians. Like from that picture, it made it look like it was like kind of like here, you know what I mean? Not here. Like just, even though it's really close, but like, yeah. Hungarians. But it's so far off and removed that it's kind of like that one black guy that shows up at your family reunion that you have no idea how you're related to. I actually have two of those. What up, Charlie and Andre? Eventually, the people developed Hungarian turnism in the 19th and 20th centuries as a counter movement against the Dominating pan German and pan Slav cultures, or just Europeans in general, that surrounded them. It all had to do with embracing their identity that tied them with Central Asia. They take
take it pretty seriously. Some places even use the ancient Hungarian rovas or runic script on city billboards. Uh -huh. In 2007, they even started the Krultai, an event that invites Central Asian steppe nomadic peoples in the first week of August with the intention to bind closer with their far off distant cultural relatives. Oh, wow. People from Mongolia to Uzbekistan, even South Korea show up every year and participate. Wow, Otherwise, that is Hungarian so culture cool. in itself today is saturated with unique customs and traditions. There are too many to mention, but some universal ones include splashing women with water on Easter Monday, or how on St. Nicholas Day, kids put out their boots to get gifts, or how they throw lentils at each other uh, on New Year's. Don't forget the Busho Mask Festival, or how a bride will get kidnapped at her wedding and the groom has to perform a task to get her back. Ah, uh, the kidnappings, they're so beautiful. Yeah, just wait till we get to the Kyrgyzstan uh, episode. One sport Hungarian. Ah, uh, the kidnappings, they're so beautiful. <laughs> Wait, yo, 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 listen, listen, if I'm ever getting married there, my wife gets kidnapped, oh, I'll see you at home, I'll see you at <laughs> yeah, Just wait till we get to the Kyrgyzstan episode. One sport Hungarians love is water polo. They have the best performance at the World Water Polo Cup. Even though they are landlocked, they are amazing in the water. We are, we're like ducks. Music has always played a huge role in Hungary since classic times to the modern Seget Festival. One of the largest and most popular in all of Europe. Otherwise, some notable people of Hungarian descent might include people like Rubik Erno, Viktor Orban, Biro Wait, Notable he... people of Hungarian descent might include people like Rubik Oh wow, Erno. that's cool. Victor Orban. Biro Laszlo. Robert Kappa. Harry Houdini. John Van Neumann. Maria Turkis. Zsa Gabor. Bella Lugosi. Although the Romanians might claim him too. As well as numerous <laughs> scientists, artists, musicians, and athletes. Scientists. Wow, right 13 noble scientists. <laughs> All right, Nick, ready to close this down with one more segment. Let's do it. The Friend Zone. I actually like this club right here. They're cool. Now, Hungary might have an isolated culture, but definitely not an isolated social status. Definitely a popular kid. Yeah. First of all, they like to call Austria their brother-in-law because even though things got ugly a few times, and yes, the Habsburgs did try to kind of Germanize them, so much history and cooperation has linked these two. They even teamed up and opened their borders to East Germany to help the people escape to the West Side during Cold War times. Uh -huh. now, despite the Ottoman times, Turkey is actually kind of the wild card friend that you wouldn't expect. Not only because they have distant technical ancestral lines, but Turkey also left its mark by leaving various historical sites and buildings in Hungary. They also take part in the Kultai and trade is cordial. Finland and Estonia are kind of like the new curious, I guess maybe we're related cousins. <laughs> they never really thought about each other until just a few centuries ago. They encounter maybe once a year and just kind of nod with a small smirk when they're in the presence of each other. Now, when it comes to their best friend, Nick, I've heard a lot of things from other Hungarians. Who do you think is the best friend of Hungary? Paprika. Country. <laughs> oh, mm, Poland. Yes. They even have a Polish-Hungarian Friendship Paprika. Day on March 23rd. Both countries have shared ties oh, wow. since the Middle Ages. Their That's rulers cool. often intermarried and exchanged headship. They fought numerous battles together side by side, supported each other's revolutions, struggled together under Soviets, and came out together even closer than ever. In conclusion, pretty much all of Europe has some kind of consistency in terms of land regions and people groups, but then you get this strange geothermal basin with Central Asian descended weird talking people that kind of just came out of nowhere who would eventually build an identity and story that would last through the ages. Stay tuned, Iceland is really coming cool. up next. Actually, such a good video. I enjoyed that. Learned quite a bit with that one, I can't lie. If you're from Hungary, let me know how it is in the comment section. I hope that you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you give a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I'm also posting a lot of content on my Patreon that I can't upload to YouTube. If you guys want to check it out, it's in the description. And I'll see you all in the next video.